can't shake them! Giving engines full power! Think you can escape? This is gonna be close! Star Wars Squadrons. It is a game in which dogfight tactics and teamwork come together in a sweet piece of fan air joy. Fly fantasy based spacecraft in a team based setting. Ship customization plays a side role as you blast into full action dogfights, play with friends, or yourself, or don't. Either way, one will have a good time blasting rebel slash imperial scum at near light speed. Holiday season, 1998. Imagine you just got your N64 a few years ago and you're waiting on a flying game that isn't Star Fox 2. Because Hi. that never happened. And then boom, your friend that's obsessed with Star Wars claims the new hot ticket item is coming with the ability to fly your own X-Wing. So you beg your parents to go to Blockbuster and rent Rogue Squadron. Much to your amazement, the low-poly graphics were great for their time, but in 2020, they no longer hold up. But then years later, Electronic Arts, EA, had a brain blast. Announces the release of a new frontier in the same energy as games past, Star Wars Squadrons. Said to take what's good and make it better. An increased graphical fidelity is just at the top of the list, but the true question we've come to answer here is neat or yeet. With EA's criminal past and with microtransactions, will it affect gameplay in a major way? This question and others we will attempt to answer today. Well, one of the first things we wanted to discuss, Panda, was multiplayer or single player. Single player looks like it's well written with several highs and lows, lots of things exploding, difficulty seems low to moderate with drama tied in. CPU, squad mates, aid and goal completion. Multiplayer looks as, as phenomenal with team complexity and the ability for everyone to fly different ships to strategize for the total domination of the enemy team. And a race to complete the objective to the destruction of the opposite fleet is your ultimate goal. Whether you're a wingman or the squad leader, there's something for everyone. If you're not much of a dogfighter, there's always strategic bombing. With several classes to choose from, you'll certainly find your fit. Yo, what about microtransactions? Oh man, that's a good point. EA's history is riddled with pay-to-win conditions. It's nice to see EA make a change almost 360 degrees back to the days before such nonsense disturbed gamers of all walks. According to the gameplay trailer, which you're now seeing on screen, it states that all items may be earned through gameplay, but the question is, will it be like Battlefront 2 where you have to play an ungodly amount of time just to earn a new character, whilst anyone can just pay to unlock it? Now it makes things hard on the gamers that already spent 60 plus on a new game all to turn around and have to spend more money. It just reminds me of GTA in a way. Many gamers long for the days of earning the old way to return. If it's true, it's a sign for better days in gaming to come. What about my VR? Uh, fair point, you sexy son of a bitch. Hey. 
According to the video, the game will have VR capabilities. What does that mean to us at Team Solar Edge? Well, Panda recently got a VR. We are excited, to say the least, for a top shot at Ace among ourselves and ultimate bragging rights. The VR as a platform can make or break a franchise, especially with a fan base as large as the Star Wars community. Which brings us to the next point. Will the sins of the past continue to haunt the franchise, or will this game be a redeemer, a diamond in the rough as they say? If what you've told me is true, you will have gained my trust. Hey Panda, tell us about the VR specs. Well, Link, according to Steam, the system recommended requirements for VR is a Core i7, 7th Gen, 16 gigs of RAM, and NVIDIA GeForce RTX 1070. The game itself is going to be about 40 gigs, um, so make sure you have that on your SSD. In case you was wondering, to build a new PC to meet these requirements, according to PCPicker.com, will be a little less than $1,500. Of course, we're very aware that this is just for new parts. You can build a cheaper system by buying our used parts on the used market. Um, you can also buy a Hot Toss joystick, which will cost you about $80 to $500 if you're that kind of person. The only downside to VR that we see is that it's a bit expensive. While we do realize that the number for the PC is if you're building a fresh new one and not upgrading your current rig, but don't let that discourse you from getting a VR or trying the game out in VR. If you're somebody that doesn't want to wait to build a PC and want to stick to their trusty PS4, you sure can and buy yourself the PSVR, which they always seem to be decent with their bundles, like the current PSVR Iron Man bundle, which is 350 bucks without tax. However, I must add that as someone who's played the VR and knows somebody who owns both an Oculus and a PSVR, this completely changes my own view of VR, personally. Now, the PSVR does not have the best of tracking. You often find yourself with foggy glasses and fight with the damn PS dildo sticks to sync up correctly. I would say the Oculus Store has Star Wars Squadron at the time of writing, they do not. But I would recommend getting the Oculus Quest 2, which you can pre-order for $300 without tax. You don't even need a gaming PC to use it enjoy, to enjoy your VR experiences. Now, we need to come to our conclusion, Panda. Do we deem it neat, or do we yeet it out the window? Let's, let's need it. In conclusion, we deem it neat. Both as a fan and as someone who is new to the franchise, or you're just looking for a good VR adventure, you can't miss. Caution though, keep the paper bag close as you might get airsick. Sincerely, Team Solar Edge.